recent thing with Ukraine has drawn some new battle lines, if you will. There's a lot of war porn going on, and I call it war porn, and I will not apologize for that. And that is because traditional conservatives want to step up for those who are suffering around the world when we can. If we hadn't wasted all this money we've wasted since 9-11, then we probably could be in Ukraine right now. Honestly, it would probably never happen. I mean, I find it so hilarious that now they're talking about Germany finally paying 2% of its gross domestic product to NATO defense. And that was the only thing that President Trump was saying on his first visit to NATO. And he was palling around with Jens Stoltenberg. The entire news cycle went apoplectic about him pushing aside the president of Montenegro, having a complete and utter meltdown about the... Uh, the toxic masculinity of Donald Trump because he wanted to be front and center in the photo op. There's a sign places for the freaking photo op. And it was not at the photo op. Someone at the time goes, who cares if they got it wrong? It wasn't at the photo op. And I had to go through five hours of raw footage so I could see that it was a tour of the new building. <laughs> Now, do you think it matters? Yes, it matters. The entire structure of the news coverage that came out when he was at NATO was absolutely 100% false. Oh, my God, Trump's going to ban an Article 5. He's going to ban an Article 5. He's, he's alienating NATO. Oh, my God. This is so terrible. We're offending NATO because they, we want them to pay what they had agreed to. Oh, my God. Oh, and then to top it off, he tells Angela that they should probably not go into business with Russia. So Trump points it out in a public meeting. Oh, my God. And they're just, they're having complete meltdown. And they are going completely insane about this idea of having NATO pay their fair share. And I have a former classmate who shall remain nameless who literally spent a couple of hours out of his day to school me on how what Trump was asking for from Germany wasn't a thing, how it wasn't a thing, that it was a complete misconception that the deplorables just seized on. Yeah, and now they're saying Germany's finally doing it. So the thing about the Ukraine situation is I don't know what's going on, okay? I know the history of Russia. I probably haven't paid enough attention to what's been going on in Russia, other than the fact that it's become an utter mafia. It's all about money, oligarchs, but that's a sweeping generalization. And then Ukraine, I have done a lot of research on since 2019. And Ukraine is the same. It's the exact same. It's as I was telling a friend last night. It's as if Darth Vader and the Emperor decided to go to battle before the end of the Empire Strikes Back, because that's when they actually did, but that was... So they decided to go to battle or something, and they both are using the worst of the Sith techniques, like, because Ukraine and Russia are probably societies that have the very, 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 very best propaganda, misinformation, psyops, etc., 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 and so forth. They're good at it, okay? Whatever you want to say. You want to call Putin a madman? Uh, do that if you want. All I know is I don't know what's going on, but I know it's not what we're hearing in the disjointed Mockingbird reporting. I know it's not. I always look at what what is being hidden. Now, the war has been going on in, in Donbass, the Donbass, which is those two regions, and Crimea. Well, Crimea was annexed by Russia. The war has been going on since 2014. It's very complex reasons for it. I'm not condoning it. I, I've been extremely outraged for years now about the annexation of Crimea, even though Crimea is a part of Russia. Russia won it in from the Turks long ago. Remember the Crimean War where the British got their ass kicked in the Charge of the Light Brigade? Yeah, that Crimea. Now, the capital of Crimea is... Sevastopol. And everybody knows that Sevastopol, California is near the Russian River. You know, right there, it's a historically Russian place. And another thing you might not know is that Ukraine and 
the Russian Federation have had joint military exercises in Crimea for years. They have a joint operating agreement there. And so, why now? And why this war porn? Well, I don't know the whole story yet. And to be perfectly honest with you, given the events of the last couple of years, I don't really necessarily expect the whole picture to ever come out. All I know is the more facts that we do discover on our own, the more we will understand it. And people say, oh, yeah, do your own research. What, you can watch YouTube? Yes. You know what's really telling when these <clears throat> NGOs, these nonprofit agencies, hold their little frou-frou, back-scratching event? What happens is then that stuff's on the Internet, and it's very telling. There are time capsules on the Internet now that enable us to fill in a picture. People say, well, you're not going out in the field. How are you finding this stuff out? Well, it's a whole new ball game, isn't it? But there are people who, due to ego or sense of duty, they preserve this stuff online. And they're not government agencies, but they still preserve this stuff online. But they get a lot of money from the government. And so that is where I found I can figure out a lot. One of those things is the partnership between the United States Department of Defense and the Department of Defense of Ukraine and its health ministry. They do this in, actually according to the website, on the State Department website and probably on the Defense Department website, but um, somebody told me it was scrub. But either way, I found it on the, on the State Department website, and by their own account, they are in Ukraine, Kazakhstan, and a few other former Soviet republics with this partnership. Uh, it's basically a threat. It's a defense threat assessment program. The health part of it is determining emerging pathogens and threats, whether biological or man-made, to the public health. There are four mobile bio labs in Ukraine that were built in 2019. But there's no smoking gun, guys, no. But this information is relevant. It always becomes more relevant when PolitiFact and Snopes get involved. I did a little reenactment of the PolitiFact fact check on, you know, saying that there are U.S. bio labs in Ukraine and they happen to correspond to where the bombing is happening, which, by the way, they are in the Donbass. Donetsk and Luhansk, um, which are the ethnic Russian sort of, you know, republics to the east, to the west of, of Crimea and, and in eastern Ukraine. And then there's one in Dnipro, Dnipropetrovsk. Dnipropetrovsk is the capital of of the province that where the Dnipro River is, Dnipro or Dnipro. And it's a very beautiful area. It's industrial. It is where Volodymyr Zelensky uh, came from. And it's also where his sponsoring oligarch came from. Kolomoisky. Now, Kolomoisky is not a good dude. He has neo-Nazi ties. He has ties to the Azov Battalion. The city of Azov is above Crimea, a little pocket. And the Azov Battalion, by all accounts, is fascist. And they were included in the Revolution of Dignity, which was midwifed by the United States State Department in 2014. This was when President, then Vice President Biden, was assigned randomly. I got all the good ones. <laughs> you know, uh, actually, Ukraine is not just some little assignment. It's a huge assignment. They have the most storage capacity for natural gas or LNG in Europe. The storage contracts are bought and paid in dollars. There's also a lot of oil in the Black Sea. Ukraine has benefited from a lot of non-governmental organizations, a lot of grant money, a lot of loan money, like I think 79% of their GDP was in a foreign debt to the United States and the International Monetary Fund over the last few years. And you would think after the, quote, revolution of dignity that things would start to get better there, right? No, they didn't. There were billions already stolen, supposedly, by Yanukovych or Viktor Yanukovych, who was the Russian-friendly president who was deposed in the revolution of dignity, and he fled to Russia. Now, he was blamed for the theft of approximately $60 billion in U.S. taxpayer money, which doesn't make sense, but a lot of stuff doesn't make sense. If you want to read more about this, you can read this book called Moneyland. It is by Oliver Bullock, 
who is a reporter for The Guardian, and Oliver Bullock immortalized the situation when the Ukrainian oligarchs were trying to leave the country with their millions and billions from gas wells, one of whom was the head of Burisma, Burisma Holdings Limited. And right after his assets were frozen by the London Fraud Office in 2014, Mr. Nikola Glochevsky fled to Monaco and he started up a, a climate-related nonprofit NGO. He had Hunter Biden speaking at the inaugural event of that in Monte Carlo, Monaco, with Prince Albert of Monaco, plus a bunch of other European heads of state, and his daughter, Karina Zmolchevskaya, Zmolchevskaya, and Hunter Biden. And this guy that used to be in the CIA, he was also on the Burisma board. And then he got himself exonerated after hiding out in Monaco. He got his money back. There was a London judge, in the old, old Bailey, who threw the case out. There was a whole campaign in, in Ukraine to cover up the, the situation and the loss of the money. At first, Theresa May, who was Prime Minister at the time, was like, we're going to get all that money back. The money that was stolen by, allegedly, by Zlochevsky, who hired Hunter Biden, was only $23 million, But um, it was only like 0.5% of all the money that's been missing from Ukraine through Privat Bank, which Privat Bank is owned by Kolomoisky. Are you paying attention? Kolomoisky. The claim right now is that there's ethnic cleansing going on in um the Donbass, and has been for the last 10 years. There's also the claim that that's where they're getting their missing kids for child sex trafficking. And um, it, so it's not just Russia today that is saying this. It's independent people who are talking about ethnic cleansing. There's a lot of mass graves in Donetsk and Luhansk, and there's a lot of missing children and children who end up dead. I don't know what to make of it all. I don't subscribe to anything. I just tell you what I know and what's hidden. I hope it does not make you uncomfortable. Um, but if it does, then I encourage you to keep your eyes on the prize. Don't get swayed by every fragmented headline that you see. It's, it's a trap. So we have to have continuity. We have to follow stories and follow up. Since the media is in general isn't doing that for us, we're going to have to do it ourselves. And that's why I started Back to Facts. And you can go to my website, which is back to the letter to facts.com, and I have an ethics page. And if you go up to like the little stripes, the little lines at the top of the website, then you can see the categories, and there's a page called Ethics. And all I have done since the very beginning is I follow ethics, which is the main one is do not, do not publish a story based on one source, ever. And you're thinking, wow, well, that happens all the time. Yes, it does. It happens all the time, thousands of times a day. Washington Post, New York Times used to have an ombudsman after they um, screwed up so badly on the Iraq war and the WMD. The New York Times got an ombudsman to watch for this thing, and they did a whole mea culpa, and we're so sorry, and yeah, we went with one source, and it was anonymous, too. Oh, we better not do that again. They have doubled down. They, they're going with one source stories even more than they used to. President Obama was president. I remember going, there are an awful lot of anonymous sources that seem to be driving this news cycle, and I just, you know, just took note. I thought, I think it's really weird that there's, like, cases right now before judges that are arguing and that New York Times versus Sullivan should be upheld because President Obama is persecuting journalists. And I'm going, you know, my head's exploding. Like, what? 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 Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. You had the Lyndon LaRouche people, you know, right after Obama won, they had him with a Hitler mustache. I'm like, you know, so offended. My stomach turned. This is 2009, guys. I mean, just there are things immortalized on the web and archived that are very good. Now, we do not have a good enforcement of our sunshine laws in this country, the Freedom of Information Act, because there are always these exceptions. The exception is anything anyone wants to hide. I mean, anything the government wants to hide is the exception. Well, if the government is the one deciding about classified due to national security, it's a perfect gig, isn't it? It's a perfect what is it? What was that movie? Um, 
American. It was with Bradley Cooper, and it was all about this huge heist and a sting operation where they caught this New Jersey mayor. Wow. I can tell you right now, no matter my ideology or anything else, that the situation is about, like, about a million of those movies. So the part about the fox being in charge of the hen house, the hens being the media, good reporters, and me going, what? My head's exploding, you know? This has never changed. It's only gotten worse. Again, I will finish with, I do not buy into scenarios. I only bring out what the powers that be are trying to hide. So I am stuck in traffic, I'm starving, and I'm hot. So I really hope you got something out of this today. And, you know, I think the most important thing is just remember, ideology does not have hardly any relevance anymore. You could be for traditional values and, you know, you you could think that the father and the home and the the family is really what's lacking. But that doesn't make you some uh, born-again Liberty University student, you know. And I know many liberals, oh, my God, abstinence, or we're going to get taken over by a by a, a evangelical tyranny. It's like, when did that start? I mean, if we don't get out of the, we got to get out of the grooves that we have been put in. Because otherwise, we are now knowingly being fools. And I'll leave you with that. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Keep calm. Share complete facts. Keep your integrity. And you can't go wrong. And remember, don't be afraid to have a conversation. Right? Don't be afraid to have a conversation. And above all, even if you think that a source of information is super bad, Try to take a deep breath, pop a tums if you feel like puking, and ask the person who is telling you this factoid what, why they trust that source and what their thinking is on it. Have a conversation with someone on the opposite side today. It'll get easier every time you do it. And above all, don't cancel anyone in your life. And don't condescend. Thank you. Bye.